My name is Kate, and I taught Fashion and Fibers in the spring of 2011 semester. And Melissa and Alan and I are going to show you on this video um, what we uh, did as our curriculum in the course. We approached the course from a concept completion uh, angle, and uh, that means from the very inception of a design concept to the very completion of a garment. And so we're going to show you um, the various steps along the way um, to get from that starting point to the end point. Enjoy. Fibers course this spring. Um, so we're going to talk about a little bit um, how we instilled the concept to completion process for our class. Um, so we decided to use cotton muslin as our basis for our garment. Um, it's a pretty standard, really thin canvas-like material. Um, and um, I'm going to get into the grain of that. But first I want to talk a little bit about just the textile in general. Um, we made it a point to the kids to talk about textiles as um, a means for expressing the mood of a garment and just the different kinds that are out there and what they might express. Um, so geometric is one kind, um, just having different garments with geometric type shapes. Um, and then basic, different kinds of textiles like polka dots, stripes, Marga stripe. <laughs> um, those are the basic common ones that you see in every day. Um, conversational, which is, you'll see them a lot like in pajamas and pillows and stuff like that. With, um, basically, it's just a fabric with recognizable objects on there, so if you have like a pillow with little bunnies on it, <laughs> that's a conversational. Um, and then abstract print, which you could take uh, washes of color or paint or um, any kind of abstract pattern that is on there. Um, and ethnic print is another kind of example too, which lends itself to geometric, it's very geometric looking, but we looked at um, different kinds of textiles across cultures and um, how they express the mood of the culture. Um, follow tradition and so on and so forth. So um, from there, now we're going to talk a little bit just about the muslin in general um, because we want to be able to drape the fabric to make a garment. Um, so we also wanted the kids to paint on the muslin a little bit and distress it before they sewed it to make it a little unique and individualize it. Um, so I made it a point to tell them to thin the paint a lot before they started painting because they had to keep in mind that they had to put it through a machine and underneath the needle. So the plasticity of the paint, if it was too thick, it wouldn't have been able to go through the needle and would have had problems. So um, <laughs> from there I talked a little bit about the green. Um, there's the warp, which is the side of the fabric which gives a little bit of stretch or stretch uh, perpendicularly across, usually like horizontally. Um, so then there's the wet width, which is um, parallel to the salvage edge of the fabric, which is if you look really close, it's like the top edge. Um, you'll see if, when you buy fabric, there's like a finished edge, and um, it's called the salvage. So you want to use that as a point of reference for finding your grain, because that's very important. Um, <clears throat> then there is the bias. Um, so a lot of times you see dresses or garments where um, the garment has no darts or anything in it and it's very form-fitting, it's usually cut on the bias, um, which by the way is a pain to work with because it stretches a lot and I don't recommend it. Um, but usually for knits and jersey knits, um, stuff like that, you want to use the bias because it helps out a lot with getting fit. Um, so pretty much if you pull on the diagonal, you get the most stretch. So that's why you're able to get that form-fitting effect without using any darts. Um, <clears throat> so, the most important thing um, about keeping the green perpendicular as you drape is to not distort the pattern that you're trying to make, um, because sometimes when you cut on the bias, like I said, and you're trying to put darts on a bias cut, it just doesn't work, and everything gets distorted, and you're going to have a really weird looking <laughs> garment, and the pattern pieces aren't going to line up, and stuff like that. Uh, so from here, I think I'm going to show how to go about draping on the form with a straight green, 